Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for, for clicking on the video. It means a lot if you guys keep clicking. If you guys keep clicking, I'll keep making. And today we are going to be talking about a cast member from 41 named Sydney. So she is on the Luvu tribe, the super, super strong tribe. And I was originally going to make a video comparing her to Parvati, right? Because there's so many of these Parvati clones. Um, and I was going to be like, oh, like she, she, she's the next Parvati. Um, but then I realized how stupid that was. And that's where this, this video is is coming from. I am actually going to talk about in in. Instead of saying how much she's like poverty, blah, 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 she's very attractive, you know, mid to 20s. I'm actually going to talk about why she needs to avoid that that label and how she can do that and what will happen if she doesn't do that. And so, yeah, I mean, I I, I thought I, I'd go different on, on this video and and not just keep with the monotones. Oh, this is the next party. This is the next three. This and that, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, um, thank you to Skylander for, for Make my uh, thumbnails means a lot. Thank you to you guys for watching. 72% of you guys who watch this video aren't subscribed. Let's change that. It's easy and it's free. And if that's it, let's get into the Sydney video. I have a video for you to, to, to show you. It's Sydney's personal interview with EW. And let's get into it. Hi, I'm Sydney. I'm 25. I'm a law student from Los Angeles, but I currently live in New York. I would describe myself as a very confident, candid, sexy individual. My confidence is definitely nature and nurture. Things did come easier to me. I do think I'm naturally athletic. And then also my parents just nursed this ego from the moment I was born. Like, I was their first child, I'm the only daughter, and I set the bar really high. I think pre-merge, I want to focus more on the base, and the base being building strong relationships. And then once I kind of establish where everybody else is going, I'm so dynamic, I can go anywhere. But my basic strategy is see tomorrow. Because everyone's looking to the end of the game, but you can't get there without getting to tomorrow. So if that means lying, then I lie. I'll deal with the repercussions later. Okay, so first off, I love that uh, comment about thinking about tomorrow, because everyone's thinking about the end of the game and she's gonna m make the move now. And that shows me that she's gonna be aggressive, which is super, super fun to see from your cast that is so full of people that are super aggressive too you want everybody to be aggressive and of course a player that you're you know that you want to win you definitely want them to, to be aggressive all right so i'm going to get into her bio on the website as in her written interview um and so as she, she said in the video she is from los angeles she currently resides in brooklyn new york she is a law student and her hobbies are running knitting crocheting and soccer Interesting hobbies, very different, like some old, old lady stuff, some grown men stuff. I like that. Three words to describe you, confident, charismatic, and empathetic. I like that. That's, that's very social gamey, if, if you ask me. Pet peeves, bodily noises, sniffing, snoring, heavy breathing, coughing. We have, we've had so many like bodily noises. I, I I know like several people had said loud chewing. I don't know what's going on. With that. I, I There's got to be like one person who's burping, farting, and chewing very, very loudly at, at the pregame Ponderosa. Um, what's, what accomplishment are, are, are you most proud of being the California state champion in cross country? Makes sense. She, she seems very, at, at, like, like she, she seems like a very a athletic person. What is something that we, we would never, never know about you? Uh, looking at you, I speak Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and some French. Jeez, I, I can only speak English. Good for her. Oh, <laughs> who is your hero and why? My father, he is the second messiah to me. He is even uh, keeled and rational. Uh, my dad is a perfect role model and the most positive person I've met. Wow. Okay, so that's super, super um, nice to, to, to see people, to you know, hyping up their family and showing so much love for their family and not, you know, hyping up a, a political figure. Um <clears throat> EV question mark. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'll move on. Uh, which uh, past survivor w will you play the game like? Natalie White. Interesting. Um, she says she she was able to assess her place in the tribe and her alliance while consciously nursing Russell's ego. Her social awareness is something I admire. So her social awareness and uh, is 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 something that is definitely something to, to take from Nat Nat Natalie White's game. Now I don't know if Natalie White wins in a modern season. Yes, she, now. Now it probably wins against Russell in any season and in, in any any era just because of how bad Russell is at the social game. But I don't know if Nat Nat, Nat wins against Jason. Um, and for that reason, like playing af after Natalie White is great if, if you have Russell Hans there. But there's only like one Russell Hans every like literal ten years. So I don't know how reliable of a strategy that is. 
she says, she, and then her last one is, why do you believe that you you can win on Survivor? She says, I have the essential social skills, social awareness. I am athletic, but not some 6'2 buff dude who will be threatening. I'm not a creature of habit and can adapt to any situation. Having watched Survivor, I, I think I benefit. Uh, uh, I think I have the benefit of hindsight, and I think I have the highest Survivor I, IQ. I, I play to win. So I, I like that. It, it shows that she's super aggressive and is totally fine pushing over anyone that she wants to push over to, to get far in the game. She seems very aggressive, but also very socially aware and seems to be playing to win and not playing for some return. Like she, she's totally fine playing a boring game if it means that that she wins, which I, I can respect. And hopefully she, she plays an, an entertaining game and wins. These poverty comparisons. So the poverty comparisons have happened ever since season, around season 20, I think. They didn't really happen from Gabon to Samoa. But after season 20, when Poverty made her second or probably her third deep run, then they really started to pile on. Um, And so, you know, every young woman, usually it's white female from the age of 20 to like 27 or 28 was being compared to Poverty. This is back and forth, back and forth, especially in the 30s when the people had like rewatched Micronesia or rewatch Heroes vs. Villains. And so they had had it, uh, you know, fresh in their mind. And so everyone was saying, oh, you're the next party if, if you were an attractive white female from the ages of like 20 to like 27 ish. And so I think that this has gone up, 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 up. And I think it really got to a halt and everybody like only really started to realize it in season 39 with um, Chelsea Walker. I mean, li- it was so blatant that it was literally just because of her. Her demographics, you you uh, you uh, could say, I mean, because she was 20 to 27. Um, she was white, female, very, very good looking person. And they immediately said poverty, poverty, poverty. I think they even called her the queen and they called Jack Jack and Jamal the king. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's gotten to a point now where it's getting a little bit outrageous. And so production is really, really trying to um, to uh, to add these, you know, people on, on the season because they want to get the um the the, the next poverty but they're i don't think they're realizing that these parties are just going to get picked off early on because everyone knows that they're being cast to be the next poverty um and also because of the whole you know flirtation thing and they they have that power over the men it's it's a very very big threat now whether that's legitimate threat or not that's a whole different video but yeah i just wanted to talk about wh- like how they've gotten out out of hand I, I think is an understatement i think it's a lot bigger than that um, and then I want to talk about how she can avoid this. So the first thing is that all of these poverty clones, the thing, the thing that they have in common is they're all gorgeous. She can't avoid that. I mean, let's be real. Like, we all have eyes. Um, number two, she needs to either come out super aggressive or super passive. These poverty clones come out and get, like, their base of three and then pick up, like, three more on, on the outside or, like, their base of four and pick up, like, three more or two more on the outside. Um, and they get, um, like, a perfect uh, onion alliance like poverty did in, uh, in, here, in um, my, my, Micronesia, where where she grabbed all, all of her uh, her favorites and Ozzy and and Amanda and James and Sari, and then she grabbed um, Natalie and the other fan that I can't think of right now, and she, she had grabbed them and then kind of took them uh, under her wing, and then she would just cut them when she got to final five, which worked out perfectly. And so it, it, it was a matter of poverty did it perfectly, and they as soon as as you either d- don't come out super mafioso aggressive or come out like 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 very very passive so, you know so so that you're not a threat then they're gonna think that you're poverty so i think that's the first thing is be, either being super aggressive and getting a complete stronghold in the game so that even when they realize that you're the next poverty they they can't do, do anything about it because the, the numbers are on your side or come out super super passive and so that you're just not a threat at all um and don't do anything stupid um uh, two or sorry three obviously don't do any you know classic poverty things like flirting with guys flirting does not work in the mo- mo- modern game i think it stopped working after maybe Karen Owen. i think the last time it worked was in but even then i don't think andrea was it and- i don't even i, I remember that but yeah like i feel like that's like the last time i, I even really saw it on tv like where it had some sort of bearing nowadays it's, it's kind of a gimmick that production adds for like a little bit of a giggle factor but it doesn't actually work any anymore because i feel like they're casting too many super fans for that to work not too many super fans in general like i, I love su- super fans being cast on um uh, now I'm, I'm going to talk about what will happen if she can't do this. So if she can't shake off this poverty moniker, she's going to go out and anywhere from second to at the merge, I guess, is the latest. Um, I feel like um, that's poverty's window. Usually if she plays a bad game, poverty in Micronesia, she, she, she goes out late swap um, and uh, with her uh, swap tribe, which she probably should have gone out if Penner did, didn't get medevaced, or uh, poverty in, in Here's Which Villains 
would would have gotten taken out at the start of the, of the merge if she didn't if, if she didn't play her, her idol correctly or if, if they voted for her specifically and, and then she played her idol for jerry and sandra and so those are like the spots where, where, where she goes out and then you see all, all of her clones go out chelsea you know she goes out at four which is the final what like 16 so yeah i feel like from the final 18 to like the final nine i feel like is, is the window if a poverty or a poverty clone plays bad um there's so much so many clones i'm, I'm, I'm getting getting confused um and so yeah i feel like if she can't do the, the things that I, I just said i feel like she, she really really has an issue and it's gonna be a very uphill battle which i feel like is kind of unfightable at that point and so that's my opinion and my overall prediction so i feel like she's gonna try i don't think she's gonna go home for the party stuff i actually think that she's not gonna get party clone i i think she's gonna be too much of a stronger like like physically stronger because i feel like parby's thing is that she's like socially strong and char and she's very charming i feel like sydney's just gonna be a very strong woman like uh physically and sh and sh sh strategically and so i feel like that's her strong suit and i don't think that she's gonna be you know given this this whole poverty this and that party this and that but i do feel like she's gonna go home probably near the middle of the merge just because she is that physical threat now she's she not a gigantic strategical threat from what i see like like she, she, she's not like a david or like a gyrus or something like that um and so i feel like she'll be like picked off because she's not the one with an idol or because there's a split and she kind of gets like you know a plurality vote coming her way so maybe a plurality vote coming like a three two one or a four three two could see her getting booed so that's where we're at guys uh i wanted to talk about sydney and how she could possibly mimic poverty or try not to to, to do to do so and i feel like overall uh our content is is, is becoming very very, very um uh, exciting now as 41 gets closer and closer and closer the next vid that's coming out should be some sort of uh, analysis of the new Survivor preview that's be being played on, on TV as I'm uh, filming th this video. It seems to show some sort of crying happening in, in the first challenge, and it, it seems very dramatic. Uh, I, I believe it's Evie who's crying. We'll, we'll, we'll break all that down, and I'm, I'm actually going to go film that right right now. So yeah, guys, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Notification bell is the most important thing in my entire on your entire screen right now. In fact, go out of full screen because I know you're in full screen and go and, and hit the notification bell. Make sure that they're all on, not just some, all. And yeah, guys, thank you guys so, so much for watching. It means so, so much you guys keep clicking and that's it. I'll talk to you.